In 2008, I booted up my Xbox, went to the Xbox Live Arcade, and found something there that really blew me away with engaging gameplay, incredible replayability, and fresh new ideas that redefined what it meant to play video games. Of course, I'm talking about Babymaker Extreme, which released in 2010 and not 2008, and it was an Xbox Live indie title and not necessarily an Xbox Live Arcade game. You get the point. This bit's over, but the point still remains. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, there was a serious boom period for the independent game developer, who, free from the specter of major publisher influence, were able to craft some of the best games to ever come out. Like, coal being pressurized into a diamond, it's this uninhibited creativity that's boiled down to a really cool core idea. What if there was a game that let you do paperwork? What if I let you turn your foes into friends? What if time moves when you move? What if you had a really good relationship with your father? A really cool core idea is almost like the heart of a game, and if you build around it, you can easily end up with something special. And even if your game falls short, you can just as easily bring that same idea into your next project. And with game development tools more accessible than ever before, we haven't even scratched to the surface on the depth of experiences that are out there. And that's what I want to talk about in today's video in the context of fighting games. A notoriously difficult genre to get right from a development point of view, I've spent the last few months playing a collection of in-development fighting games from independent teams, some as small as a single person. The games themselves don't need to be good, hell, they don't even need to be all that functional or even complete. The thing that I was looking out for was the idea, the nugget of a system or a prototype that could really stand on its own given the proper opportunity. So here's what I found. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to smash that subscribe button or gently caress the follow button on my Twitter. So when Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was coming out, there were a lot of professional fighting game players hyping it up in interviews with a lot of uh, enthusiasm. And even this many years later, there's still one quote from an interview about the game that I remember from time to time. It was from when Born Free was talking to Filipino Champ, and he said this. Like dash, I could wave dash, I could fly, I could do this, I could do that, and it's open world. Open world? Open world? Now, given the hostile environment that discussions about MVCI were taking place in at the time, people memed this quote to death because, you know, that's the dumbest thing that Filipino champ has ever said. In fairness, it does sound kind of ridiculous on its face, and open world fighting game only really makes sense if you're the type of person who believes that every Mario game is an RPG because you play the role of Mario in a game, and if you are that person, stop watching this video, turn on Netflix, Coco Melon is right there. At the time, this quote was seen as disingenuous, a stretch of a comparison that only someone with an active interest in marketing a video game would say. Surely nobody actually believes that an open world fighting game is really a thing, right? And then I played Heatwave and thought, oh, I totally get it now. It's not that Heat Wave by Monochrome Soft is a game where you can jump off of mountains or return fetch quests or fall through a floor into an infinite abyss, but what it is is a very impressive game that allows for a lot of player expression by giving you a bunch of tools to do very impressive things with very little restriction. Between the lowest, fastest air dash you've ever seen, jump cancelable normals, assists, parries, supers, EX moves, ultras, double jump cancelable normals, and a burst that can be used defensively to break combos or offensively to continue them, it feels like anything you want to do in a combo will work if you're willing to put the resources into it. In other words, you see that mountain? You can climb it! Now, I don't think I necessarily have it in me to pull a Leon Massey and talk about this game for an hour while somehow using a total of 40 words, but I will say that all of these mechanics, heavily inspired by games like Guilty Gear and Last Blade, work to make offense feel almost improvisational in nature, almost as if it moves to the beat of jazz in a cosmic gumbo, all held together by a spectacular game feel. 
Heat Wave makes you feel like you're the goddamn sickest fighting game player to ever exist whenever you bust out a dope combo by complete accident in the same way that Brian F wins major tournament matches. And at only $5, you're also getting a surprisingly hefty amount of content in the game with 15 well-developed characters that share 20 assists, three different control modes that change up the game significantly with a bunch of standard fighting game fare like combo trials and an upcoming visual novel story mode. It's fantastic. And outside of this godforsaken input, there's not an element of Heat Wave that I cannot recommend enough for people who really enjoy labbing out cool things in fighting games. Are you sick and tired of every single fighting game that's come out since 2016 catering to casual gamers with mechanics like auto combos and assist modes? What about doing special moves with baby mode inputs like quarter circle forward? Wouldn't it be so much better if that same special move was charge down, charge up, forward, quarter circle forward? If you think so too, I would wholeheartedly recommend a game called Motion Sickness, Impossible Inputs or Impossible Damage by Andrea Demetrio. It's a game that at its core is a parody to the perception that fighting games are dumbing themselves down for wider audiences. It does that by making inputs so needlessly complex that only someone with a desk level of hand dexterity would be able to make any headway at all. Now, if this were the only thing that the game had going for it, it probably wouldn't be that good. But the most interesting part about motion sickness is that the game allows you to take advantage of three different difficulties of special move inputs. There's the previously mentioned super hard motion sick, your standard fighting game motions, and finally, simple single direction special moves. Of course, as the title of the game implies, the easier the move is to do, the less damage it does. So in game, you're always making the decision of sacrificing consistency for damage or damage for consistency. It's honestly a pretty neat mechanic, but the cherry on top is that you can actually change which system of inputs you use on the fly during a match. You can even cancel into and out of moves by switching into a different control scheme, almost like a stance switch or a Roman cancel. Motion Sickness provides an interesting gameplay alternative to accessibility by making accessible options core to the overall experience. It's good stuff, and by the way, links to this and all of the games I'll be talking about for the rest of the video are in the description. Lastly, one of the most common complaints and most frustrating things about fighting games in general is that most of the time, the overall package of features is never that great. One of the biggest culprits would probably have to be the exclusion of meaty single player features. Fortunately, there are some indie fighting games out there that make an honest attempt at letting the loners play with themselves. Right now, I wanna give a bit of shine to a neat little game called Beat Down Dungeon Demon Day by Phil Airdash, which does a lot of the same things that Dim's Fight Nerds did with their single player mode, like the top down RPG style and fighting game matches against story specific NPC opponents. But I do like the way that Beatdown Dungeon focuses on building a party. So if you're weak with one character or low on health, you can swap them out for a new point character. I also like how there's a lot of dialogue between the characters, so you get more story and a sense of their personalities. And for my Paper Mario fans out there, there's actually a pretty robust badge system that changes the way matches are played. You can choose between a badge that gives you a parry or a fast fall or more air dashes or a special launcher or better damage scaling on combos or better chip damage or better... Uh, you get the idea. But you know, Beatdown Dungeon still has a versus mode with all of the badges and partners included. So if you're looking for something even more single player than that, how about a fighting game that literally does not have a versus mode at all? Aerial Raver by Migs the Just is a love letter to combos in fighting games, so much so that it's literally all you do. It honestly has more in relation to something like Super Hexagon than it does anything else. You equip a loadout of familiar moves from a bunch of different fighting games, hit the launch button, and then using jumps, wall bounces, and everything else at your disposal, try to stay in the air for as long as you can while juggling the poor unfortunate whackbot ever so higher into the sky. You know, if I'm being honest, there's a lot of jank here, but I'd be lying if I said that I'm not actively enjoying my time hot swapping 
different moves to squeeze out the tiniest bit of height, the smallest amount of extra hits, and the itty bittiest type of super meter so I can make more money to upgrade my moves and get back out there. Aerial Raver really hits that numbers go up spot in my brain that makes the good brain juice flow, and I think it's because the game almost has a similar progression system and gameplay loop to a lot of great mobile games out there, and that's not a slight at all. I'd actually really like to see it on phone app stores if the developer ever gets around to it. If I were to talk about all of the cool indie fighting games that are doing amazing things out there, this thing would be hours long. I could talk for days about how Tough Love Arena is straight up the most accessible fighting game on the planet since you could play it in a web browser, or how Arcus Chroma is proving that you can make a really solid, slick looking fighting game even though jumping isn't a thing at all, or how Cerebral is starting to come together, and when it finally does, we're gonna have a contender for the best looking, best sounding fighting game of the year. Pocket Bravery, Drag Her, Shut Up and Drive, Five Force Fighters, and the dozens of games that I just did not have a chance to play. It's impossible to keep up with all of these outstandingly creative new games, but thankfully, Andrea Dimitrio, the previously mentioned creator of games like Motion Sickness and Schwerber Blitz, has a recurring article on supercombo.gg that features great indie fighting games that you should pay attention to. I hope I was able to introduce you to a new game you've never heard of, so go out there, try something new, recommend it to your friends in the same way that I'm recommending these games to you, and you just might make an indie game developer's day. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel since I'll have more fun content out soon, and I'll see y'all next time.